Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a devil's food cake and this is what it looks like. We have two layers of this really moist uh, and dense chocolate cake and we're going to fill it and frost it with the chocolate fudge frosting. So the uh, first thing that you need to do is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And you will need two eight inch pans with two inch sides. So that's um, 20 centimeters by five centimeters tall. And then what I like to do is butter my pans. I just, what I did is just melted a little bit of butter and then I use a pastry brush and just, Brush the bottom and the sides really well. You could just use one of those non-stick sprays if you want. Either one works. So, and then just take a round of parchment paper and put it in there. That way we make doubly sure that our cakes do not stick to the bottom of the pan. That's not a good thing. So, hey. Okay. Put those aside. So in a medium-sized bowl, the first thing we need to do is put three quarters of a cup, which is 75 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder. Now you can use just the natural or you can use the Dutch process, whichever one you have in the house, whichever one you prefer the flavor of. And then what I'm gonna do is I've got one cup, which is 240 milliliters, 240 grams. I'm using hot coffee and I'm just gonna whisk it into the cocoa powder to dissolve it. Now, I like to use coffee because I think it really, coffee and chocolate really go together and the coffee actually seems to enhance the flavor of the chocolate. Now, if you don't wanna, you just say, oh, I don't like coffee, then you could just use hot water. But really, I find using just this amount of coffee. I don't find it really flavors a cake that much with a coffee flavor, but again, if you don't like coffee, just use hot water. And the reason I'm actually even doing this is when you dissolve the uh, cocoa powder in a hot liquid like this before you make the cake batter, it really actually intensifies the flavor of the uh, cocoa powder. So I'll just sure it's all dissolved. Wire whisk, although you know you can use a spoon or a fork if you don't have a whisk. And then to that I'm going to whisk in a half a cup which is 120 milliliters, 120 grams of, now you can use either um, sour cream or you could use, I'm actually using a plain yogurt. So either one. That's going to help with that rich flavor of this chocolate cake. And then I'm also going to whisk in two teaspoons, eight grams of pure vanilla extract. And that's for flavor. Again, vanilla, chocolate, coffee, <laughs> really good combination. Okay, that looks good. So I'm just going to let that, because we had that hot coffee, so I'm going to let that cool down while we start our batter. So if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment, or you could use a hand mixer. Really, if you, know, if you don't, you could use a wire whisk in a bowl. So the first thing you will need is 12 tablespoons, which is 165 grams of butter. I'm using unsalted here. I prefer the flavor. You could use salted. Have your butter at room temperature. And I'm just gonna beat this just until it gets nice and smooth. Okay, so this is a butter, what we would call a butter cake, made with butter. So now what I'm going to add is one and a third cups, which is 265 grams of granulated white sugar, and then Kind of a little different here because we are using butter. I am going to add six teaspoons, which is 30 grams of a flavorless oil. Now that could be like corn, canola, vegetable, safflower. You could even use light olive oil. And it's not a lot of oil, but 
Just a little bit of, of oil just helps with, if you want to store this cake in the refrigerator, it keeps it soft enough. You know, if you just use butter, it kind of really firms up. That little bit of oil, it's amazing the difference it makes. And with the texture of the cake, it really helps to get it nice and like soft and moist. So now I'm going to beat this on medium high speed, probably about three minutes until it's nice and light and fluffy. Okay, so that looks good. So what this is what we're looking for. Not only is it light and fluffy in texture, it's also very light colored. So that's what you're looking for. Let's scrape this down. So now what we're going to add is two large eggs, have them at room temperature, and I'm going to add them one at a time, beat one in and then beat the second one in. Second one. Okay, that looks good. So now, in a separate bowl, I have one and a half cups, which is 195 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. To that, I'm going to add one teaspoon, four grams of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon, uh, two grams of salt. I like to use the kosher salt. Find a little milder uh, tasting than the table salt, but either one. So just whisk that. You could also sift the, the ingredients together if you have a sifter. So now, we are going to go kind of back and forth adding the dry and the wet ingredients to our batter. I'm going to add about a third first of our flour mixture and beat that in. Do that slowly, you don't want that flour coming up at you. And then I'm going to add about half of our cocoa coffee mixture. Okay. Beat that in slowly. scrape down. We want to make sure these ingredients get mixed together and don't forget the bottom of your bowl. So now a little more of our flour. of our coffee mixture here. This is such a moist cake and with a really wonderful soft crumb. It stores well, so perfect cake. And it is a classic American style cake. Perfect for birthdays and all that sort of thing. Get all this out of here. Don't want to waste. Okay. Beat that slowly. Just going to give that a quick scrape. And we'll finish off with the rest of our dry ingredients. And then we are done. Okay, looks pretty good. 
that. I'm going to finish kind of mixing that in by hand. Okay. So we need to di divide the batter evenly, as evenly as we can, between our two pans. If you have a scale, you know I'm big on scales, this is the time to use it. Then you don't have to eyeball, although you can do that as well. So um, I find about 580, around 580 grams in each. We'll see how that works. Don't forget to zero your scale before you put the batter in. A little light here, so I got a spoon. Okay, that's about right. So now, this you won't slop like I do. <laughs> Side. So then just take either the back of a spoon or an offset spatula just to level those off. And then, as always, everyone's oven is a little different. I find with uh, these, around 35 or around 30 minutes, somewhere, it could be a little more than that, could be a little less, but let's just say 30. It also depends, if you're using aluminum pans, I find it takes like maybe 25 minutes to uh, do it. And you know, always, you don't want to overbake your cake, so check them. You know, if I say 30 minutes, check them at like 25. Because you don't want to overbake your cakes because then they're dry and nobody likes a dry cake. So what we are looking for, they will rise and you know they'll spring back if you kind of lightly press the center. Toothpick inserted into the center will come out clean and you will also start to see the cakes just starting to come away from the sides of the pan. So I find around the 30-35 minutes. So our chocolate cakes are done. See, they've risen. They're just starting to pull away from the sides of the pan. Toothpick inserted in the center, came out clean. Now, you can see there's a little cracking, perfectly normal. Don't worry about it. So um, just put your pans on a wire rack. Now, we, we have to let these cool at least 10 minutes in the pans so they can firm up, cool down. And then when we come back, we will take them out of the pans. So to remove the cake from the pan, take an offset spatula, or you could use a knife. Just run it all around the inside just to make sure it's not sticking. And then I'm just gonna take a wire rack, flip it. Hopefully it'll come up. <laughs> there we go. And just peel off that parchment paper and then flip it back onto a rack like so. I'm going to let these cool completely because we don't want to frost a warm cake. So I'm just going to let them cool and when we come back, we'll make our frosting. So now for our chocolate frosting. You will need a saucepan of simmering water. And in a heat proof bowl, I like to use stainless steel. I have six ounces, which is 180 grams of unsweetened chocolate. Now that means this chocolate does not have any sugar in it. Um, so it's, it's not a chocolate you would eat, uh, just eat on its own. And I like to use this because, you know, then our frosting is not too sweet. So I'm just going to put that over the simmering water. And now some people will say they can't find unsweetened chocolate. You could use like a bittersweet or a semi-sweet chocolate here. Just keep in mind that then because there is sugar in that type of um, chocolate that your frosting is going to be a little sweeter. But I still find it 
I've often made this with semi-sweet chocolate and I still find it really good. So now what we're going to do is just melt our chocolate. Like I said, coarsely chop it so it, it will uh, melt a little faster. Okay, so our chocolate has melted, so I'm just going to remove it from the heat. Now, at this point, it is a little warm because we just melted it. So I'm just going to leave it sitting right on the counter here for a few minutes until it cools down to room temperature. And then when we come back, we will make our frosting. So now, for our frosting, again, if you're using your stand mixer, use your paddle attachment, and you will need one cup, which is 225 grams of butter. Again, you can use salted or unsalted, have it at room temperature. And now I'm going to beat this till it gets nice and creamy and smooth. Okay, I'm just gonna scrape that down. And the next ingredient you will need is two cups, that's 230 grams of confectioner sugar. You may know that as powdered or icing sugar. And I did sift, sift it. I'm just using the strainer. If you have an actual sifter, you can use that because you probably know powdered sugar has lots of lumps. So we want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to put that in there. Make sure you get it all. Along with, I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons, which is about six grams of uh, pure vanilla extract. It's like I said before with the cake, uh, chocolate and vanilla to me go really well. And try to use a pure vanilla extract, not the, uh, the imitation ones. And then I'm just going to add a pinch of salt, like an eighth of a teaspoon. And then I'm going to beat this, start slow with all that sugar, and then I'm going to beat it for probably a couple minutes. I want to get some air in there, make it nice and light and fluffy. <laughs> Okay, so, got that. Now we're going to add our melted chocolate. Scrape that down. Make sure, like I said, your chocolate has cooled down to room temperature. You don't want to be putting a hot chocolate into our frosting because it'll just melt it. Oh, so good. Smell that chocolate. And then I'm going to beat it for, you know, a couple minutes again, get it all mixed together and get a little air in there, a nice soft and fluffy frosting. Okay. Okay. Our frosting is done. Doesn't that look wonderful? It's kind of got light and color. So now we are ready to frost our cakes. Now, when you, I am going, like I just baked the cakes, so they are going to be a little soft if, you know, freshly baked cakes are. So if you want, what you can do, what, what I often do, is bake the cakes one day, wrap them really well after they cool down, put them in the fridge, and then you can frost the next day. So what I do is I like to use a cake circle, just cardboard cake circle, I'm putting a little glue down there, because I find it easier to transport the cakes with this, but if you don't have one, you could just use your spatula and just put it on either, I'm using my turntable for this, or you could just put it on your uh, serving platter right away. Because we're not going to get too fancy here with how we frost. So I put that on there, and then I put a little frosting, so hopefully that'll won't move around as much, hopefully. So there, we have cake. So I'm just going to put big dollop, maybe a couple big dollops of frosting. I'm not going to get too fancy here. I'm just going to 
We're doing this like the, just an old fashioned, this, this is, this is a classic old fashioned chocolate cake. We're not gonna get too fancy here. Make it easy on ourselves. <laughs> so just, and put it to the edge. You're using one of these uh, long spatulas, but you know what, you could use a knife, back of a spoon if you don't have one of these. Don't worry about it. Try to get it even. And then if you want, you can kind of just even it out. Look down, looks pretty good. I think that's enough frosting. And then we take, I'm just using, I'm just using a really big spatula here. Put this on. Try to center it. Looks pretty good. And then, just put frosty. Oh. This is a cake I use for like, my birthday and, or when I have a real chocolate craving and I'm having some family over or just because you want something good. Okay, so that looks good. Now, I'm going to take this, put it over to the side, and start just pushing it down the side, and then just kind of going back and forth, like so. Try to get right down to the bottom. there. I'm just going, I mean, you can get fancy on this, but I just like a nice old fashioned chocolate cake. Nothing to, you know, you don't need any special, special skills for icing this cake. You can go up if you want, or you can do swirls. <laughs> So there we have it. Some say a devil's food cake got its name because it's so simply rich. And others say it's because this, a devil's food cake, is the polar opposite of an angel food cake that's really nice and white and fluffy. So there we have our devil's food cake. Now, if you want it, you can kind of just put some candles on there. You could put fresh fruit. You could do sprinkles. I am going to do, I have some chocolate shavings. You could have, you know, um, just grated chocolate. Pile it up because I never have too much chocolate. And there we have it. You know, this is a wonderful cake. It'll stay fresh. You know, quite a few days at room temperature. You can put it in the fridge. Stay, it'll store even longer or you can even wrap it, put it in a cake box, wrap it really well in the outside with plastic wrap, and you can freeze the whole cake. And then when you want it, just take it out, defrost it in the fridge, and it looks like you were really busy that day and all you did was take it out of the freezer. So we will cut a piece. So let's take your knife. Now it's gonna be a little soft, because like I said, we just baked this. But who doesn't like a freshly baked cake? And that cake circle really helps because you can get your knife or your, your uh, sp spatula right under underneath there. Ooh. And there we have it. Our devil's food cake. <laughs> doesn't that look gorgeous? Look, I mean, the color is almost black, which probably the whole devil's food cake thing. Um, and then you have the really nice offset with that, the frosting, the color, the lighter chocolate color. And let's try some. I like, of course, I like lots of frosting. That's wonderful. That cake has a really deep chocolate flavor. It is so moist. The crumb is soft, it's moist, yet dense. 
And then the frosting. It, because we use that unsweetened chocolate, it's not that sweet. And it's nice, kind of fudgy. A wonderful cake. Try this one. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joyofbaking.com. Thank you.